Good morning and thank you for joining us today for the PCA Resources Investor Webinar. I'm Jane Morgan and today I'm joined by our Executive Chairman, Gus Simpson. So the company has a suite of high quality uranium and gold assets in Australia and Argentina with up to 40 years of exploration history resulting in high confidence draw ready targets. The PCA IPO is currently live and investors are able to download the prospectus from the company website which is pshay.com.au. To tell you more, I'll hand you over to Gus. Thanks a lot, Jane. And uh, thanks for the opportunity to be here. Um, Pshay Resources, we're a, a, a West Australian domicile company. Uh, we've drilled ready uh, uranium and gold projects in both West Australia and Argentina. Um, normal disclaimer, I'm sure you'll have seen them before. Um, just want to talk quickly over what we are as a group. Um, as I said, strong uranium focus, um, significant gold exposure. We've got walk-up drill-ready targets, a very experienced board and management team, and, uh, and we believe there's exponential demand and robust tailwinds out there for both uranium and gold. Um, the jurisdictions that we're operating in are um, a, a, a tier one and um, an emerging tier one. And, uh, and we go into this environment with a very tight uh, capital structure, um, pre-IPO enterprise value of um, uh, 14 million with, and a free float of 42% of the shareholding. Um, our keep, we've got a, a group of uranium and gold projects in Western Australia, but we will be talking today to the Ashburton project in the Pilbara, which is about 1,100 kilometres north of... Um, uh, Perth in Western Australia and about 140 kilometres to the uh, south, southeast of Mount Newman. And, we, and then we are talking to two other uh, projects in, uh, in uh, the Chibut province of um, Argentina, Cerachecon, which is a, a gold project of, of significance, and uh, Serra Quidata, which is a, a large uranium project that we've been working on now on and off for uh, a decade plus. Just talking to our board of directors, um, you know, my claim to fame was I built the last uh, 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 uranium mining operation uh, that was in Wyoming in the United States uh, when I was uh, executive chairman of Peninsula Energy. Um, we took it from, uh, you know, basically a grassroots exploration right through the entire process and, and, uh, and a very complex process of, of permitting and uh, 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 funding um, uh, feasibility, construction, and, uh, and ultimate operations. And, uh, and that's still operating today. And, um, and uh, I believe uh, progressing well. Um, Steve Mann, who is our managing director and currently in Argentina, um, um, coordinating the teams, uh, our two exploration teams there, uh, is uh, ex-head of Arriva in Australia. Arriva, of course, is the world's fourth largest uranium producer and owned by the, uh, the French government. Um, Pablo Massat is a, uh, another executive director we have. He's currently a director of Arcadium Lithium, which is a New York listed uh, seven or eight billion dollar uh, producer. And uh, he's an ex-director of Barrick Gold and, um, and uh, the Canadian company U308. Clark Bayer is also on our board. Clark um, was previously the managing director of Rio Tinto Uranium and um, uh, was responsible for the sales, about a billion dollars worth of sales in the uranium space globally uh, for, for many years. Stan McDonald is our um, uh, sort of founder, and uh, Stan, uh, I suppose, ha has been involved with many Australian listed companies. Um, the most notable of those is Duralia Resources, which was taken over for about 850 million um, a decade uh, ago. Um, Uranium markets, um, probably the reason you're here is because th those markets are looking like the, the best they've been for, 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 for their history. And um, with, you know, 436 operating reactors in the world and um, 64 currently under construction, you know, the, uh, the prospects for uranium and uranium producers looks extremely good. Um, our uranium projects, the first of these is the Ashburton project. Um, it's in the Pilbara region, as I said before. It uh, consists of 122 square kilometres of exploration licence. There are 14 historic uranium occurrences uh, spread across about 65 kilometres of strike. Um, 
Uh, prior drilling uh, that was done under our custodianship uh, has identified significant uh, high-grade unconformity uranium. The potential here to host similar mineral deposits to Pine Creek and uh, at Athabasca Basin is, uh, is high, and uh, we'll try to uh, demonstrate that to you in the next minute or two. Um, the lead projects uh, prospects in, in, at uh, the Ashburton are the Angelo River prospects. These uh, pan-continental drilled 62 holes uh, along seven kilometres, the BB fault line here, and uh, inter in intersect uh, 71 um, uh, drill intercepts greater than 500 ppm. That's about one and a bit pounds per tonne of, uh, of uh, uranium. And, um, you know, currently that's, uh, you know, uh, long-term contract pricing is probably around sort of $70, $75, uh, which, uh, of course, is, is a good, good revenue number. Um, uh, you can see here uh, uh, the high-grade drilling results here. What's in, the important takeaway from here is um, you know, it's, there are very good intercepts here, very, uh, very high-grade material, and um, uh, and the uh, the uh, these are drill ready, and uh, we're in in the process of of right now of um, final permitting with the um, local communities to uh, to start drilling on these post uh, post IPO. Um, as I said before, there's 14 other prospects on the tenements that we hold, and uh, and some of those have had delivered significant drill results. Um, uh, even though exploration here has been uh, fairly limited, um, but uh, all of these prospects uh, will be uh, explored uh, in a systematic way, you know, over the next uh, the next decade. But our focus in the short term will be uh, Angelo A and B and extensions to the northwest of those. Um, we're excited, obviously, about this. We know there's high grade uranium there. We just need to determine how extensive uh, 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 that. Um, uh, material is. Um, touching on Argentina uh, as a country, as you probably know, Argentina is a nuclear power. It has three nuclear reactors of its own. It um, also is in, uh, has two new construction. Um, it's uh, a, a lot of the major uranium, sorry, major mining companies uh, in the world are uh, there looking for copper, gold, lithium, and uh, there's been tremendous success over the last decade or two uh, in that in that uh, in that exploration process, and and many of those are now under development. Um, <clears throat> uh, the uh, the area that we're operating in, uh, Chibut, is uh, uh, has a, a, a long history of uranium discovery and of uranium mining. Um, the uh, Argentinian Atomic Energy Agency here. Uh, uh, flew the entire country for um, uh, for uh, radiometrics uh, in the um, and magnetics back in the fifties uh, and sixties. Uh, they identified literally hundreds of uranium uh, anomalies, and uh, they explored several of these, looking for fuel for their own reactor program, uh, and were successful in doing that. Um, uh, Los uh, uh, Cerro Condor, an open pit mine. Uh, in the same Cretaceous sandstones that we're exploring in, and uh, uh, this material outcropped at surface and was mined at about 6,000 ppm, which is a, a very high grade uh, uh, operation. The Los Adobes open pit mine also was outcropping open pit mine, um, uh, and it was at 1,400 ppm, and these things were mined out, you know, over the 60s and 70s. Um, the decision was then made by the government to, to source um, uh, uranium from uh, internationally. Uh, we're talking about an environment of about $12 uranium uh, as compared today, you know, where we're in the 90s. And uh, so Sarah Solo, another deposit they identified there at 4,000 ppm wasn't mined because it was uh, at 50 metres to 130 metres depth and not outcropping on surface. All in all, um, significant exploration here and significant exploration opportunities here. The projects that we have, Sarah Cordata, uh, cover 410 square kilometres um, of, uh, uh, of an area 200 kilometres north of Comodero Rivadera Dava, which is in the San Jorge uh, Cretaceous uh, sandstone basin and paleo channel systems. There's extensive uh, flat-lying visible uranium here with assays 
uh, you know, greater than 3,000 ppm or 6.6 pounds uh, U308 per tonne. We've had grades up to 1.2, 1 1.3% uh, uranium in, in the work that we've been doing over the last couple of years. And, uh, and we're currently in here uh, with uh, auger drills um, and uh, drilling, uh, generating um, uh, uh, samples that uh, we'll be uh, be assaying, and uh, and that and the that, that data should be uh, available for release uh, not long after we uh, complete the IPO. Um, Serigadata, in our mind, has the potential to be a very very. It's a very very large system as it is, um, but our uh, you know our, the work that we uh, have planned for here is trying to determine just what the size and scale of this is. But um, we have very high expectations of it, and we believe that it, it is uh, an internationally significant project. And uh, and uh, and hopefully we will uh, be able to demonstrate that over the next year or two. Um, uh, program we did at the end of the last year, um, uh, end of two twenty three, we took uh, ninety two samples uh, from various parts of the areas that we're we're working on currently. Uh, at surface, and uh, they returned an average of about 2,600 ppm. Um, that was from all of those 92 samples. If you took out anything less than 150 grams per ton, U308, uh, we were left with 74 of those samples, and they averaged nearly 3,200 3, ppm. Um, that's about seven pounds uh, of uh, uranium per ton. So very exciting. Um, we're currently drilling the, the road reserves there. On a uh, on a uh, a dirt highway that traverses our entire property group over about 50 kilometres, um, we're doing radiometrics and magnetic surveys over a, an area of about 1,200 square kilometres. We're currently pegging about another 400 square kilometres here, and we're also preparing a 25 square kilometre uh, uh, location um, uh, for gridding and trenching program. Um, that, that will be able to determine, you know, what sort of mineralisation is in that in that very large area, and uh, and and that program, of course, will start immediately after um, uh, uh, the, the IPO is completed. Um, there's significant repeat uh, um, mineralisation across this paleo channel systems here, and uh, in in areas that we just haven't got to yet, but uh, over the next, uh, you know coming uh, decade, we'll be exploring uh, many of those areas as well. Um, talking to our goal projects here, again, these projects were generated by our members of our group uh, back in about 2008 and 2010. Um, the Sarah Check On project um, is located about 10 kilometres south of, a, of a, a small hamlet called Paso de Indias, which we uh, use as our base there. Um, that fascinating little town, uh, fuel stations, uh, small hotels, restaurants, um, local population for uh, for unskilled labour and um, and so on. These tenements consist of 365 square kilometres. Um, there are 14 um, outcropping um, uh, hydrothermal systems here, um, all of them displaying uh, uh, very good trace elements. All of them with the with the appropriate staining that we think um, suggests uh, is suggestive of significant gold and silver mineralisation. We've been focusing on two of them: um, the check on grid and uh, and La Havela, and particularly on check on grid. We um, back uh, back some time ago we did a, a lot of geochemical and chip sampling here. Identified. Um, uh, a, a good grade uranium, a good grade gold, sorry, and silver in those programs over about 400 metres, and uh, and then we did uh, an IP survey and and uh, identified a, a very uh, significant target, um, resistivity target down between about 80 and 150 metres uh, uh, under the surface, as you can see in the diagram on the on the left hand side. Um, we are currently there with our field team, and we're extending that uh, that IP survey from 400 metres out to two kilometres. We uh, at the same time continuing with uh, geochem and uh, and chip sampling at surface, and we're gridding this uh, that whole area 
um, for uh, for a drilling program which is planned to to start you know within uh, weeks or or at least a month of um, of the IPO being completed and uh, and we were coming in here with RC rigs with uh, and a diamond rig and we'll be putting diamond tails on these uh, RC holes and uh, targeting this uh, this major anomaly that we've uh, that we've previously identified. Um, it's a high priority project, uh, multiple outcropping, as I said before, with high grade prospects for gold, silver, and silver mineralisation. Um, it looks a lot like uh, a very successful Newmont mine, uh, some uh, several hundred kilometres south of us, uh, the, the Cerro Negro uh, operation, and uh, and indeed the key one of the key players in our group who uh, who uh, was, was a party to the identification of this prospect for us, um, worked on, on the Sierra Negro one and, and uh, the similarities were, were a big draw card for, for all of us to get to, to get involved and continue the program. Um, that's the projects. Uh, um, I, I hope that was a reasonable summary. Um, I want to talk to now uh, uh, the offer overview. Um, we've raised significant money um, over the last couple of years. Um, there was probably, in today's terms, previously spent under under uh, members of our group's custodianship. You know, probably ten to fourteen million dollars in today's dollars. Previously, we've raised four um, through support from our seed capitalist shareholders, and um, and currently there's about seventy three point four million shares on on issue, and we're doing a a, a ten million dollar raise. Uh, at, in this raise at 20 cents a share with one free attaching um, a 2027 option attached to every three three shares. Um, that'll raise for us uh, uh, 10 million. We've still got about one and a bit million in the, um, in the tin. So we should have a good clear 10 plus million to continue forward uh, on, on expiration uh, at these three key projects. We're running them all in parallel. Um, it, it will, uh, it, it, as I said, the programs are effectively drilling programs or, or um, costing, costing programs, and uh, uh, along with um, you know uh, ma magnetics and radiometric surveys to, to to generate further drill targets. But we are anticipating that we'll be uh, drilling at all three of these, both uh, very in a very short time frame after IPO, and uh, and for a very long period. Post that. Um, this is a use of funds demonstration. We, uh, you know, intend to spend as much money as possible on uh, on gathering information from these projects and and advancing them significantly, adding to uh, the shareholder value uh, as we go. Um, this is the work program. Um, you can see I've really touched on all of this already, but um, they're, they're extensive programs, and as I said, occurring at all three of the key program groups. Um, this is a peer comparison chart. Um, look, there's you know lots of people out there in the uranium space. Um, I, I think what stands out about us is we is the scale of the projects that we've got, and also the complementary nature of of having a very significant gold project running in parallel uh, to this as well, which gives us uh, uh, you know gives us a couple of strings to our bow. Uh, the investment opportunity here um, is basically, you know, high-grade uranium and gold projects uh, with immediate uh, uh, expiration programs of substance and uh, a very strong, you know, good enterprise value of around 14 million, and um, and uh, and the opportunity to to take a position at at good at very good pricing and uh, with additional benefit of the uh, of a listed option and uh, strong broking and obviously uh, existing shareholder support in where we're going and uh, and what we're doing um that's it from me jane look thank you for the opportunity i hope it wasn't too uh, too lengthy but um th that's it from me no that was perfect thanks for that gus and look i'm going to jump into some questions if you've got some come through now um so Look, I know you discussed the internationally renowned board management team. However, can you please provide a little bit more information just on your experience, which I know you did touch on in the presentation, but uh, just for anyone that missed out. Yeah, look, I, I've been around the resources business, um, you know, for a long time, since the since the 80s. 
um, and and uh, in a in a in a junior capacity back even in the 70s, but um, you know got involved in in the gold business initially, uh, moved on uh, uh, with some success for that significant success discovery in um, in uh, in um, in Kenya back in the in the late 90s. Of course, the gold price fell away. Um, moved on into the uh, 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 into the vanadium space. Um, uh, then moved on into um, uh, 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 the uranium space with the, uh, as the founder and uh, and chief executive of Peninsula back in 2007. Took that through um, to to post Fukushima and completed the construction and the, and commissioning of the the mining operations there and um, and uh, and then you know had a uh, had a break for several years and then this opportunity presented itself to me several years ago through my old partner Stan McDonald who had brought um, uh, brought the Peninsula opportunity to us as well, and also uh, some of the other ones uh, uh, that I'd been involved with historically. And, uh, you know, th as far as I was concerned, these three projects were the best things I'd seen in, in my entire career and um, and decided that uh, I'd uh, get uh, get fully involved and and now, you know, fully vested and, um, and looking forward to an exciting uh, 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 sort of half decade. Thank you, Gus. I'm just going to touch base on the uranium market now, and particularly given your experience. So where do you see the sector heading, given that it's critical for clean and reliable energy future? Yeah, look, it, it, you know, I, I, you know we're, 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 living in, we're living in a world where people have decided that they wanted to go to, to change the, 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 you know, the, the, the basis of, of power generation, in, in, at least in the Western world. Um, certainly, China and Russia and 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 other economies haven't haven't rushed headlong into renewables in the same way. But what 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 this this move towards renewables has demonstrated is that there is a a, a need for you know a, a base load, and uh, you know while hydrocarbons provide that base load, due to the the, the emissions relating to those, um, people are looking for uh, an alternative. To, to that base load and, so, and you know the existing nuclear infrastructure in the world has proven to be incredibly reliable incredibly consistent and and uh, and, and and an incredibly low cost producer of electricity and I think that's just going to uh, expand and continue not just in China and the and Eastern Europe and the Middle East but you know uh, it's, it's going to be uh, it's going to continue um, in uh, in Western Europe the two big economies of Western Europe and the United States. Um, future looks looks very bright and uh, very exciting, not just for nuclear power, but also for people providing that fuel. Particularly if you can provide that fuel from places you know like Australia, uh, like um, Southern Africa, you know like uh, like Canada, uh, like the United States, and and now in our case, you know like from South America, from an economy that's already uh, a participant in the nuclear in industry anyway in its own right. Thank you, Gus. Changing pace a bit here. So, what excites you most about the projects? Look, all three of these projects, um, uh, in one word, it's scale. You know, all, all three of them have the potential to deliver something that is world class. Um, and and you know, really, in 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 this business, you know. You, you're, you're looking for world-class assets. You're looking for world-class assets um, that, you know, are in the first quartile of the cost curve and, and that can deliver, you know, volumes of material that, that you know, catch the attention of, um, of, of ultimately your customer base. And, um, and we think that we have three of those and that's why we're advancing all three in parallel. You know, one, the sort of success that we're hoping for at one of these projects is a company maker. You know, we believe we've got a real chance of that at all three of them. And um, and that's really important in, in the nuclear fuel space. You know, the, the, the customers here are big utilities. You know, I've dealt with them. Clark Bayer, of course, is probably one of the most informed um, uh, participants in the, in, the, in the uranium sales space in the world, if not the most informed. and and they, these customers are looking for low-cost, long-term, ge geopolitically secure 
uh, suppliers. And, and, and that's what really excites me about what we're doing is because we meet, we meet all of those that criteria. We just determine, uh, we have to determine through the next, you know, three to five years of e exploration and, uh, and development, we have to demonstrate clearly what the scale of that is. And, uh, and that's really exciting. Thank you, Gus. I know you covered this a lot through your presentation and particularly with the program of work slide, but what should shareholders be looking forward to from a news flow perspective once we hit the board? Yeah, look, very shortly after hitting the board, you know, we'll be uh, bringing expiration results uh, to the board. Um, we've, you know, had uh, uh, an ongoing uh, shallow auger drilling programs in Serra the uranium project there. We, uh, you know, have significant uh, radiometric and um, uh, uh, surveys going on as we speak at Sarah Checkon, and uh, and of course we're preparing for uh, um, uh, twinning the high grade um, historical holes uh, up at the Ashburton. Um, that work will happen quickly. Uh, it, it's going to generate um, uh, uh, strong results, and uh, and and we'll be. Um, you know, uh, uh, um, providing those to the market, you know, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, just as soon as they're available to us. So lots of news flow from all three projects, um, which is, you know, it, you couldn't get a sort of lower risk environment for results uh, generation because we're going back to uh, areas where that we know well and we, we know are very uh, well mineralised we just, again, you know, in the process of determining what that extent is and what the quantum is, yeah. Wonderful. Well, that's what we've got time for today. Gus, I want to thank you for your time and I want to thank you all for joining us. As I did mention, the Pichet IPO is currently live and investors are able to download the prospectus from the company website, which is pichet.com.au. As you can see from the screen, Euros Hartleys are lead on the IPO. So if you do have an account, I would encourage you to reach out to your client representative directly. But uh, thank you, everybody, for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you, John.